Hello everyone, my name is Amy Kalupka and I'm the Curator of Art at the Wacom Museum. Welcome to part two of the virtual gallery tour of Conversations Between Collections. The exhibition spanning two gallery spaces is on view through January 3rd, 2021. Through special partnership, it features three masterworks on loan from the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Today I'll discuss two paintings created by modern and contemporary indigenous artists displayed alongside the work and stories of regional Coast Salish artists. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that the Waka Museum resides on the traditional territory of the Lummi and Nooksack people, who have lived in the Coast Salish region from time immemorial. The museum honors our relationship with all of our Coast Salish neighbors and our shared responsibilities to their homelands where we all reside today. On the second floor of our Light Catcher building is the People of the Sea and Cedar Gallery. This gallery is dedicated to showcasing the history and art of the Northwest Coast people through historical and contemporary perspectives, language interactives, and first-person interviews with Coast Salish artists. The gallery features wood carvings, cedar root baskets, handmade tools, and more. Themes of cultural knowledge, symbolism, and lifestyle present Northwest Coast tribes as thriving communities who honor their past while building strong cultural and economic futures. It also includes archive photographs such as this image on the left of Lummi carver Joe Hilaire creating a canoe as his grandchildren look on, as well as a beautiful wool blanket woven by Lummi artist Bill James with information about the materials and processes used to create such a complex work. Through audio and video interviews, you can hear master carvers like Nooksack artist George Swanesett Sr. or Lummi artist Jewel Praying Wolf James pictured here, talking about their work. In addition to carving story poles, Jewel James is committed to environmental protection advocacy. Since 2016, James, along with other House of Tears carvers and members of the Lummi Nation, have traveled nearly 5,000 miles with a 22-foot-tall totem pole on the back of a flatbed truck along the way building tribal alliances while protesting the development of fossil fuels. Alongside the artwork, stories, and interviews are two incredible paintings on loan from the Smithsonian American Art Museum. State Names by Jean Quictacy Smith, shown here, and Indian and Contemporary Chair by Fritz Scholder. Both works upend traditional colonial narratives of indigenous peoples. Shoulder, who was one quarter Luzenio and quick to see Smith, an enrolled member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes of the Flathead Nation, both draw on notions of native identity in their expressive works. In Indian and Contemporary Chair, Fritz Shoulder uses bold color relationships, strong line and gesture in his work that pull you into the scene from across the room. Through the energetic painting style and unconventional subject matter, he questions the static and stoic trope of the noble savage, frequently used to portray Native Americans and commonly associated with works of the 20th century photographer Edward Curtis. In this painting, Shoulder's subject is seated in an enclosed domestic space, complete with modern furnishings and his dog on the carpet by his feet. The figure's painted in a flat and disjointed manner, that reflects discomfort or perhaps someone wrestling with inner torment. Some areas of the painting are filled in with thick, solid blocks of saturated color, while other sections are thinly painted, with areas of raw canvas exposed. This adds to the unsettled feeling of the scene. Shoulder struggled with his identity as an indigenous person who moved a lot as a child, attended white schools, and as an artist who used indigenous figures as central subjects in his work. He was often criticized at times for being too indigenous or not indigenous enough. His powerful paintings disrupt comfort zones and depict Native Americans as emotionally complex, multidimensional individuals grappling with contemporary concerns. Jean Quick to see Smith developed a unique style combining aspects of her Native American culture with an interest in abstract expressionism and pop art, which she studied in college. Looking at this piece, you can see the influence of modernist painters like Jackson Pollock, Robert Rauschenberg, and Jasper Johns. Unlike Johns, who used maps as formal elements in his paintings from the 1960s, Smith's maps challenge viewers to think about identity and history in new ways. When we look at state names closely, the map of the United States is instantly recognizable. 
but names are blurred and some are missing altogether. It's difficult to read and state borders are obscured by drips and washes of paint. Closer looking reveals that the names Smith chose to include on the map come from indigenous sources, while the names she left off are European in origin. Smith began using maps as a subject in her work in 1992 in response to the quincentennial of Columbus's landing. She relates these works to the beginnings of European colonization of North America and emphasizes that they're about stolen lands. The dripping paint, which is reminiscent of blood or tears, combined with the black oceans, contributes to the ominous feel of the work. Both Shoulder and Smith examine and critique dominant narratives and histories in their work. As they interrogate persistent myths, they also promote resilience and survival, offering new perspectives through their visual storytelling. Their paintings, along with artworks by Lummi and Nooksack artists, emphasize the important role art making has held for indigenous people for millennia. Conversations Between Collections is one in a series of American art exhibitions created through the multi-year, multi-institutional partnership formed by the Smithsonian American Art Museum as part of the Art Bridges and Terra Foundation Initiative.